Man, I want to play Grand Theft Auto. Except, I don't want to have all the blood and the, the violence and the guns and the weapons and the rated M-ness. You know, I, I want something more for pussies. Well, that's where I come in. It's pull time! Did you really cut your hair for the bit? Yeah, I'm, I'm a bully. Dude, that's my hair! Well, quit your crying, would you? Because I got what you need right here. But... My fucking hair! Rockstar, well known for making some of the more mature content in the market, decided to make something that was a little bit more tame. They decided to make a game that is very much like Grand Theft Auto, but have it rated T. For teen. No, it's not that one, you- that's not even by the same cup. However, the game is more than just a teenage version of Grand Theft Auto. If anything, it goes deeper with the plot and is more polished because of that. But, nah, I'm getting ahead of myself here. Uh, let's actually talk about what's happening in this game. So our story is told through the perspective of a young Jimmy Hopkins and... Oh, okay, why, why is the screen black? Why, why is the screen... Oh, we're playing the PC edition? Yeah, it's one thing to mention that the PC version of this game doesn't really work too well on newer hardware. It has been re-released though on the PlayStation 4, iOS, and Android, but you know what? I'm still gonna be playing on the PC version because I'm borderline satanic. So yeah, young boy Jimmy Hopkins is sent to a new boarding school after being kicked out of four other ones. This one being named Bullworth Academy being placed in Bullworth Town. And while it may seem nice, Jimmy comes to learn that it's riddled with assholes galore. Kids try to fuck him up only for him to fuck them up, only for a big kid to fuck him up, only for staff just to come in and yell at everybody. I think you get it. It's a strict school and everyone's quick to beat up the new kid, but even among all these assholes, is there anyone willing to be our friend? Well, the answer to that question is yes, as Jimmy makes two right away. Pete the Wimp and Gary the Sociopath, and when you add a little pinch of Jimmy in there, you get a, you get a nice recipe for an outcast group. Gary tells Jimmy of his plans to take over the school, and after helping him out for a bit, he backstabs Jimmy, so now the plan is left up to you. But instead of taking over the school, Jimmy instead wants to set it straight. He wants to set order and make everyone equal within the same group. And that's kind of the character that Jimmy is. Sure, he's a tough guy and maybe a bit of an asshole, but he's not there to put anyone down. If anything, he's trying to set the school straight so everyone can get along. That's what makes him such a likable character. He's not mean to be mean or nice to be nice, everything he does has justification. Plus, he's a very straightforward guy, he doesn't dance around the problem and he doesn't fake what he's feeling. He literally tells the principal straight up that his school is a shit show. That's how much of a straight man he is. It's really interesting because you're made to believe that this guy is some kind of an asshole, but it's the complete opposite once you see how he acts towards other people and what his reasoning is for doing things. He's one of the more fleshed out characters that Rockstar has ever created. In fact, there's a lot here that is different from a traditional Rockstar trope. Yeah, that's right, I'm fucking unique! No, no, you're not, actually. In fact, you're, you're the most generic character I've ever created. <laughs> whatever, I'm still cool though. It's pull time! You see the people around you, these students? Well, each one is a real character and has an identity. They all have names and personalities outside the story cutscenes, and it's really cool to see the amount of detail that is put there. If you interact the same way with each student, it can result in different outcomes, like one kid might beat you up, or others just might want to make out with you. It is really diverse. But it doesn't stop there, as each of the students' clothing represents what kind of group they're in. You got the nerds, the jocks, the preps, and the greasers, with each one boating a respect meter. The lower that meter, the more that group will try and kick your ass, but the more you go along with the story, the more respect you'll gain from each group. That's what your goal is in this game. You gotta gain the respect of all the groups and make it so that they're not fucking each other over. But while that in and of itself is interesting, you may have noticed me constantly bringing up the story. And I'm gonna be honest with you, it's something you really can't avoid. Doing quests not only gets you familiar with the characters, but it's also a way to unlock the key components to the game. Unlike other games, Rockstar has made it so that you can't just pick up a weapon and then use that weapon whenever you want. You're instead gonna have to do a quest to unlock the various weapons that Jimmy can get, and this is also true with the town that you travel through. You gotta wait till you can actually, you know, go around there. It's not that annoying though, seeing as the story in this game is kind of interesting. The interactions you have with not only the students, but the faculty is nice to play through and it's kind of refreshing seeing as other Rockstar games don't even have that kind of charm. Like, do you play San Andreas for the plot? No. Do you play GTA 4 for the plot? No. Do you play GTA 5 for the plot? Yeah, maybe just a little bit. My point still stands though. The game doesn't shy away from the school cliches either, but here it's more tasteful as it's used for good character development. Like, the nerds are these wimpy, smart-talking assholes, but if they weren't like this and were, say, less exaggerated, it wouldn't make them feel all too unique. The game gets more in-depth with its detail, and it's clear that you're at a strict school, and with that comes school activities. And, well, 
rules. My mortal enemy. Th that doesn't even make any sense. Well, you don't make any sense. You don't make any fucking s What even? Whatever. While you're a student in the school, you have to go to class, and while they are technically optional, you'll be missing out on stuff if you don't do them. For one, you do get bonuses for each time you pass a class, whether that be accuracy upgrades or health percentage increase every time you kiss a person. Not only that, but do you see this bar over here? If you are a delinquent causing trouble, the prefects will try and catch you. If you get busted too many times, you'll have to serve detention. The higher that bar, the harder it is to escape, and if you're caught in the red, you'll automatically get busted. Think of it as the wanted system in GTA, only it's more easy to get in trouble for stupid shit, like, why is me not wearing a helmet that bad? But going back to the classes, they're either fun and interesting, or fucking awful. The two that come to mind are English and Geography, because there are too many words here to figure out in such a small amount of time, and no, I do not know where the states are on this map. And in the Geography one, you lose time for fucking up, like, excuse me, I ain't no globe, I can't figure this shit out without trying every fucking shit. And yet you don't even get anything good from this class, you, you just get clothing. And while clothing is an underwhelming reward, it's still kind of nice to get in some certain situations. But even then, it still kind of depends on what you're getting. You can go out of your way to look like a civilized student, or you can be a pig man, or you can even be a fucking alien! Watch me as I return to my mothership! Yeah, this game also has those kind of quirks, but it can be connected to how old the game really is. It was released around the PS2 area, and while it can look weird, it has that sort of charm that makes it hold up well. Well, in some instances, more than others. Plus, every cutscene in this game is in-engine, so whatever outfit you have on, it will appear in the cutscenes, so it, it kinda makes for serious moments look kinda goofy. But that's all the reason why this game can feel so immersive. Plus, this game's music kicks so much fucking ass. Hey, almost none of that matters now because we've been expelled. Fucking great. I guess Gary ratted us out for attacking the city, but this means we can't attend any classes and everybody fucking hates us, so, you know, that's that's a plus, I guess. We're back where we started, but only worse as everyone is fucking everyone else over pretty fucking hard. To fix all this, Jimmy needs to get help from the biggest motherfucker of them all. The kid who kicked your ass at the beginning of the game. But not only that, but we have some townsfolk to help us, seeing as they want revenge on the school in one way or another. So we do it. We beat each faction, and now it's time to take down motherfucker Gary. Gary! Moron! Why'd you do it, Gary? Claire, why'd you do it, Gary? Why? I, th I thought me and you were friends. I, th I thought we were soulmates. I, th I thought me and you could get a little... <laughs> This is dumb. <laughs> so here he is, Gary. Uh, this is the only fight where I believe you can't use any weapons to your advantage. You're fighting fist to fist in the true style of a school fight. There's no real quirk to fighting Gary seeing as he's just like every other student you fight, just a little bit tougher. He hits hard and it's hard to hit him well. But when you eventually crash through the ceiling, you end up in the principal's office where he is tied up. Jimmy explains that he fixed everything with help from not only his friends in the school, but people outside the school too, causing the man to change his mind about, well, all of them. And when Jimmy asks about being expelled, well, let's just say it looks like it ain't happening. And that's it. That, that was Bully. Scholarship Edition. And, well, there's really nothing much I can say other than the fact that it's a great game. This is one of those games where it's far better to play rather than have me talk about it. The sheer detail in this game alone warrants the purchase, but the lighthearted story and interesting gameplay mechanics adds more to that. I can really recommend this game to almost anybody because it's just that much enjoyable. I'd really like to see this game return outside of re-releases, something like a ground up remake or even a sequel. But looking at the rumors, that just might happen. I gotta give this one to Rockstar. They, they made a game that made it so I want to actually play the story and not just, you know, fuck around. That, that, that's a new one for me, if, if anyone cares. And you know, that means more me, you know? You know, I want more cameos, more, more videos of just me. Uh, I want a clothing brand, merchandise galore. Any product that you can get, I want my name on it. Uh, I, I want- oh! oh! What the heck? Why'd you do that? I don't want you to become a recurring character.